school looking now at uh, 2019 and I'm just going to do all of question 8. I got a good few questions here and there on question 8 so I'm just going to do it all. Um, a part I, uh, what is a secondary alcohol? Um, so the carbon attached to OH group is attached to two other carbons. Okay, then part two, you're asked on the same sheet of graph paper, and I just have some graph paper here, okay, um, you are asked using the same pair of axes, so you have to label both axes. I'm asked to plot, plot the boiling points of these alcohols against the number of carbon atoms present, okay? So the first one is methanol, okay, methanol, meth, one carbon, and its boiling point is 64.7, okay, so 60, 61, 62, 63, 64.7. Just remember, when you're going up, you have to go up in equal multiples, okay, so that's my boiling point for methanol. Ethanol then has two carbons, so I go up to ethanol, and that is 78.4, okay? So 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 78.4. Next then, I have propan 1 ol and propan 2 ol, and both of these have actually three carbons on them, okay? So um, if I'm looking at 97.2, so 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 97.2. And propan 2 all is down a little bit further at 82.4. Now I'm just after realizing here that my butan 1 all actually goes beyond 100. So it's 110 and 120. Okay, so I just get D up there. Um, so if I look then at butan 1 ol, so that but has 4 carbons, so I go up to 110 and it's at 117, so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, okay. And the last one then that I have is butan 2 ol, so again but has 4 carbons, so I go up here to 4, but I'm at 99.1. Okay, so I'm just going to label these. So this is methanol. You don't have to do this. This is ethanol. Then we have propan 1 ol. We have propan 2 ol. We have butan 1 ol. And butan 2 ol. Now, it is always good practice to draw lines through it. So I'm just going to draw a line firstly using my propanol and my butanol, and then just using my propan 2 ol and my butan 2 ol. Okay, so in this case, there was no uh, marks for actually drawing your line through the points. Okay, so that is my graph, and we do actually need that later. So we're asked here then for part three, state and explain the trend in boiling points. So I'm just labeling that there. Uh, of the four primary alcohol shown as their relative molecular masses increases. So as I can see, it's increasing, okay? So we're asked firstly to state the trend, my boiling points increases, okay? And then you're asked to explain and the reason why is because we're going to have greater hydrogen bonding, okay? So there's more intermolecular forces, okay? Um, the biggest reason, remember, why my boiling point increases, it's due to two things. Firstly is the type of bonding, so whether it's van der Waals, dipole dipole or hydrogen bond or my relative molecular mass okay so the reason here is that i have uh, more electrons okay 
which means I'm going to have a bigger relative molecular mass. Just when you say relative molecular mass, I would also include just the word electrons as well. Okay, so that's part three. Part four then, predict the approximate boiling point of the next alcohol in the same series as propen 2 all and butan 2 all Okay, um, right, so if we're going to look at this, okay, this really is the curve that I'm looking at. This is propen 2 all and this is butan 2 all so if I was to continue for my next one, it would be in and around here, okay? So by my graph, I'm getting 110 degrees Celsius, okay? So there would have been an acceptable range there, okay? Um, so depending obviously on what your graph would be, but if I was to draw a line just simply carrying on here, the next member of my series, Remember, we would have five carbons, so that's why I'm going up to the five, okay? And this is where it touches my line. So I'm getting 110, and there would have been a range there that is acceptable. So that's my answer to part IV. Next, then, we're asked for part B. Uh, consider the oxidation of alcohols in which no carbon-carbon bonds are broken. And you're asked to give systematic or IUPAC names for uh, two possible organic problems or products of, for the oxidation of butan one all So the big clue here in the question is that you have no carbon-carbon bonds broken. Okay? So that pretty much rules out making anything other than um, uh, extra carbon bonds, we'll say. Okay, so I have give consider the oxidation of out. I have butan one all. Okay, that's what I'm told in the question. Okay, this is a primary alcohol. So the two possible. compounds that this can be converted into by oxidation. Firstly is butanal, which is when its primary alcohol is oxidized to an aldehyde and when it is oxidized to a carboxylic acid. There is no carbon-carbon bonds being touched there. Draw the structure of the organic product when butan 2 all is being um, is being broken in this is oxidized in this way. So butan two all remember is going to create a ketone which is butanone. Okay, so one, two, three, four carbons double bond on the carbon here. Okay, so that is your drawing of that. Then you're asked, identify clearly which bonds in butan 2 all are broken in this oxidation. So what I'm going to have a look at here is I'm going to have a look and see what I have present and what I have new. So if I look, propen 2 all sorry, butan 2 all is this. Okay, and I'm converting it into this, and my carbon here is on, or my OH is on my second carbon, okay, if I number right to left here. So, if I look, we're asked here for the bonds and butan 2 all which are broken. This is the first one that's broken, okay? The reason why is because there is no OH bond here. So the first bond that's broken is O to H, okay? The second bond then that's broken, if I look at here, this is a C to H, but I don't have a CH here anymore. So this is the second bond that's broken, CH. If you are asked for the bond then that's formed, this is the only one here that's formed that's different. All the rest are the same. So that's your answer there. Part C. Um, 
So we are asked, the ester formed from methanol and propanoic acid. Uh, you're asked to draw the structure. So remember, my methanol is my alcohol. It's always drawn last, always bonded to the O. And then I have my double bond here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is my propanoic acid part, C double bond O. This is my alcohol part. Then you're asked, how many carbon atoms are tetrahedrally bonded? So this is tetrahedrally bonded, this and this, okay? So three is the answer there. Remember, this is in planar geometry, so it's not in tetrahedrally bonded. And what are the products of this? So um, of the hydrolysis of the ester, okay? So what that basically means is if I was to um, to synthesize this using basically you're looking at your soap hydrolysis of an ester. Now, usually my co-product is um, is glycerol, but the alcohol in this one is methanol. Okay, so. The products that are going to be produced, the first one here is going to be, or one of them is going to be methanol. Remember, usually it would be glycerol, but I'm using, um, I'm using this here, my methylpropanoate instead. And what is going to be my, um, usually I have sodium stearate when I use glycerol tristearate, but in this case, I'm going to end up, instead of sodium stearate, I end up with sodium propan oate. Okay, so that's a little take there on soap. Okay, so quite a difficult question there. So remember, this usually is sodium stearate because I start off with glycerol stearate. But here I've started off with propanoic acid, so it's going to be sodium prepanoate. Uh, or sorry, propanoate, and usually for soap I have glycerol, but again it's methanol here because that's the alcohol I use. And that is the answer to that question.